I'm going to briefly explain Nikola Tesla's non-dispersive concentrated energy projector. A lot of people know it as his death ray. It's pretty much a Van de Graaff ion accelerator on steroids. To go quickly through it, there are a couple different parts to it. There's the two nozzles that he has that he designed for being able to do this without needing it to be done in a vacuum tube. There are the evacuated bulbs for, I call them the vacuum anti-arcing bulbs. So with the bulbs, he then designed a way for improving electrostatic generators. The reason Tesla talks about needing the nozzle to be open vacuum is so that the particulate can accelerate between here and here, not have it smashing into literal air while it tries to traverse to here. Any other way done, usually with the Van de Graaff ion accelerator, they have some sort of like shutter they put on the front there or a film that they open the shutter and then shoot the particle and close the shutter or the film is a one-time use and you just shoot it and you shoot as many as you can before this fills up. What Tesla talks about is that you be able to feed so many little particulates in there you could never make a shutter that could close fast enough for the actual nozzle to stay evacuated and so he designed it so that the nozzle had essentially a, a venturi effect on it he would introduce either desiccated air basically compressed air or steam would be used to feed over the evacuated terminal and it would suck would pull a venturi on the evacuated center and if you did it right in the right conditions he said it would take about 10 to 20 horsepower to run the nozzle and keep the system going which is all things considered not very much with what you're trying to do here because that's just as the main thing the nozzle the power you put out to actually run this is just a basic loss once you're powering it it's just that's it it's not going to get worse or whatever and then on the edge here he talks about doing similar shapes like his tesla valve to help reduce the amount of energy that's required for pushing in because any amount of atmospheric air trying to rush in will use some of its own energy to slow itself down before it gets in there. It's not the best, but it uh, works. Another version he says to do is similar. He does the same Tesla valve curves here, but he says do this to a vacuum so that the steam wants to come out or it'll keep going and that goes to the vacuum. Now, furthermore, my thought was if this is going to a vacuum and you're running steam to here, what a waste to just not do anything with that. Also, also, he talks specifically about making this nozzle out of ceramic or some sort of very high temperature material that can handle the heat that's going to be generated of particles moving through here at such a high velocity. The heat generated off of this should superheat the steam coming through here if the steam and compressed air go to vacuum here. Don't just do the vacuum here. We put a Tesla turbine here. This goes to vacuum so that all the steam made to run this nozzle is just run into a turbine and all the heat that's generated off of this nozzle is used to re coop to run the turbine that powers the nozzle it's pretty simple right it's not that complicated you got heat pressurized steam expanding goes through a turbine to a vacuum you just remove once if you remove the heat from here with the condenser you've got you're, you're winning you got a condenser to remove the heat you maintain the vacuum and that is a ranking steam cycle steam expands through a turbine goes to a condenser condenses creates low pressure keep maintaining it you apply heat to maintain your steam supply if you got to start it up you run it with gasoline to run a small boiler to run this going but once you're powering this non-dispersive concentrated energy projector, the heat of the nozzle should be able to provide all the energy to run the nozzle. And for reference, this is nothing new. Van de Graaff ion accelerators were some of our very first particle accelerators that we used to do the very first particle physics. That's how it started, really. Our electrostatic accelerators, then we went into RF and magnetrons and rheotrons and all sorts of stuff. But these, this is some of the first linear accelerators. And then Tesla's, I like to say, this is a Van de Graaff ion accelerator on steroids. Because what he made possible was not only can you take this up to much higher voltages, which means you can get much higher acceleration rates, meaning your nozzle and your whole thing can be smaller but he made it so you can put out more power into the electrostatic generator with this desiccated air circulation system without doing the non-conductive belt like normal belt van de Graaff generators so now